Hey, how's it going out there, folks? Welcome back here to a Monday. Start of the work week is upon us. January 6, 2025 is the date, about 1022 a.m. California time here. Look at the live seismograph stations there. Look pretty quiet, aside from a couple smaller quakes there in the China Lake area of Southern California. Uh, th that area also down south here has seen a or had a 3.1 earthquake earlier uh, this morning. Looks like about 5 or 6 o'clock uh, today we had a 3.1 near El Centro. Now that is just off the Imperial Fault. Noticing a little bit of earthquake activity here up north as well along the Brawley Seismic Zone. Uh, that earthquake activity coming in following the movement down south here in El Centro. So it looks like we've got a little bit of migration here up along the plate boundary. That is the Brawley Seismic Zone. Uh, we've got to watch out see if that doesn't extend uh, in terms of migration up north here across the area of the plate boundary quite active out here across the uh, San Jacinto fault zone and a cluster of activity specifically within this region today uh, noticing a, a decent amount of uptick here far as anything above 2.5 that's going to be the uh, uh, well we up north here at 2.9 along the San Andreas fault the creeping segment had a little bit of earthquake activity as well but uh, definitely a noticeable uptick in the microquake department here across Southern California and also up here across the uh, Tehachapi Mountains and the Garlock Fault Shear Zone. Got a linear type uh, event going on here indicating the strain being pushed up against the shear zone. So active, definitely active out here in Southern California today. We'll keep an eye on that. Uh, further up north along the uh, Calaveras Fault Zone it looks like couple smaller quakes there from yesterday one in the last hour a little 1.5 northern california yeah one after midnight a little 3.6 off the plate boundary here very shallow earthquake so things are still adjusting out here got to keep an eye on things obviously because they can uh, get quite ugly in terms of larger scale movement out here across the west coast uh, yellowstone national park got one earthquake a little 1.1 1 .1. uh let me just verify that make sure that things are quiet as a state uh, all right um yeah there's not a whole lot of activity there's a couple earthquakes there from uh, late last night looks like uh, that may be I don't know that's from yesterday afternoon so either way not a whole lot of earthquake activity to report there across Yellowstone for now one earthquake outside of Helena from yesterday up in Montana as uh, far as the rest of the country here, Texas oil field starting to light up with earthquake activity. There's that one quake here from yesterday. Out in the Mooring Sport, Louisiana area, quite a few oil fields out here getting hit with uh, some earthquake activity. Uh, as far as any major uptick or unrest here overnight, well, things are quite active out here across this area of the globe today with a swarm of movement out around the Mediterranean, including a 3.6 earthquake. Looks like a 4.9 in there as well. So this is going to be, uh, looks like around the Greece area. That earthquake coming in about 2 o'clock this morning for a 4.9. This is also swarming out here following that event. Uh, a little 4.1 from yesterday out here in Turkey. Uh, let me give a quick glance, or just off the coast there of Turkey. I want to give a quick glance at the... Uh, EMSC model, see what we have here. There's that area of swarming going on across the um, the Greece area. Obviously showing up quite nicely here on the map as well as the Earthquake 3D globe. So we'll keep an eye on that. Definitely got uh, some broader scale event taking place out here. Uh, 5.2 out here across Iran and a 4.8. 5.2 north of the Himalayas here. Quite active uh, today. Now if we look at the uh, rift boundary there across the Ethiopia area, the majority of these here from yesterday, so nothing showing up. I do have the live seismograph stations here that have been recorded in the last uh, 24 hours. Looks like uh, our last event there of Four Pointer uh, was from yesterday. This event looks to be um, of some type of distant nature in terms of uh, the location. I'm guessing that's going to be 
uh, maybe picking up some of the earthquake activity there in, in Iran and maybe this uh, 5.2 there in China. But uh, this is a seismograph station around the uh, Ethiopia area showing some of the earthquake activity from yesterday. But as far as localized activity, this is not local. This is a distant event, a couple of them. And, but aside from that, I don't see any localized events today across the Ethiopia rift boundary, which has been hammered with a whole bunch of earthquake activity here recently. Uh, 84 earthquakes there. Uh, to be exact, at least from the USGS, that is, there's got to be some smaller quakes in there as well that hasn't been accounted for because uh, they only report the uh, normally 4.5 and above, but as you can see, occasional 4.2, 4.3 being reported in there as well. So we'll watch that area. Uh, there's a movement there in Iran. Fairly shallow. I mean, it's uh, it's just off the plate boundary, so that's going to happen. Got to see a uh, going to see a little bit of activity stirring up out there when things start to move, which they look like they're doing today. Uh, Java Trench pretty active here around the Andaman Sea southward along that plate boundary, the subduction zone. Nothing big going on there for now. Japan area, a couple smaller quakes there, including a five pointer. Moderate quake here off the coast of Tokyo into the Japan Trench, about 14 miles deep here. Things starting to kick up here in the last 24 hours, including one here this morning just off the Kumano Ridge. This one 26 miles deep here into that subduction zone. Got to watch that area. It's capable of producing uh, some large damaging earthquakes. It's coming up on the regular interval time period of when a mega quake uh, should happen on it. Or could happen on it. Uh, New Zealand, a little bit quieter here today. We're watching a swarm out there across the Bay of Plenty, White Island area. Today, a little bit less active there on the map. Some deeper activity into the Tonga Trench once again. Uh, Hawaii, nothing showing up there, but I do want to double check, see what we got. Let's give a quick visual here of the Kilauea volcano obviously still seeing some volcanic gases out there that's going to continue for a little while uh, following this latest eruption from that crater area there was a, actually a, a fissure that opened up here on the side of that crater wall a little weak area that uh, found its way up and uh, produced a couple days of eruption material there across the lava lake area of Kilauea volcano but as things look right now they uh, they look pretty quiet in terms of any visual eruption double check the inflation chart here see what we have today things should be going up in terms of inflation which they are they have been since the pause in the eruption in the eruption here about uh two and a half days ago or so but we're not uh, seeing a whole lot of major uptick in terms of that inflation but uh it's still there a little bit so I have to watch that and see uh, if things progress. Maybe they'll just calm down here for a little bit, and then we'll see a uh, another eruption somewhere around the area. But uh, let's check out a seismograph station out here, see what we have. Pretty quiet. So obviously not a whole lot of stress or buildup underneath the area right now. We'll continue to check back on that. Uh, South America area, typical movement down there, really nothing of any concern. Middle America Trench, about the same as yesterday here. The Atlantic Ocean, pretty quiet. One earthquake way up north there on top of the globe, a little 2.5. Uh, aside from that, we'll watch... Uh, was that a new earthquake there? That's a 5.2. That came in uh, about 9 o'clock this morning. It's about an hour and a half ago. We'll watch things out here see what uh, takes place in terms of space weather activity well almost another x flare out here it looks like near x flare and m yeah maybe not quite m 4.8 either way that's a decent flare and uh, a number of m flares and x flares have been produced here in the last couple days i'm guessing that one there came off of uh 3947 which has been the culprit of all these recent flares. Now, that area is right about here. Looks like it is just coming down from the M flare. Uh, 1814 it was a UTC time. I believe that's pretty current. 
fairly current. 1814. So this area pretty much uh, lined up here, directly facing Earth. That uh, is a, uh, a dandy of a sunspot there that's been producing, again, numerous M flares and 3X flares so far. In terms of complexity, it's a little hard to tell because it's we just don't have the complexity models to look at anymore because of the uh, the issue down there at the Stanford University there where they had the flooding event across the data servers that monitor the um, uh, the colored image here of the magnetogram. We got the black and white image, but it's kind of hard to tell. Do you, uh, hard to decipher on in terms of complexity here but even looking at the black and white image itself there's still a lot of intermixing here within that sunspot region and uh it's it's a big one looks like it uh is continuing to grow 3947 here um they have it at a beta gamma delta structure which is the most uh, complex structure there is, and that's uh, the ones that normally blast off the X-flares. Shows that it's declining, but that's just what they're stating here. Um, I wouldn't say it's declining because we've been popping off flares left and right. That's normally a sign of, uh, uh, of it staying either stable or growing. So we'll continue to watch that. There is still an elevated flare threat, 25% chance there for an X-flare, M-flare at 75% chance. And proton events could be uh, on the rise again, pending we get some more strong flares. No major auroras there in the forecast. A little bit of uh, unsettled conditions here over the next couple nights, but really not looking at anything major. Uh, a glance here at the next close approach asteroids, five of them, shows us that uh, we're all safe. At least according to these folks here. Over a couple millions of miles away here for the majority of these five next five asteroid approaches. All right, far as severe weather goes, uh, you know, they got a lot of cold out there. A lot of ice built up there on some of the roads across the area, creating some havoc. But in terms of severe weather potential here today, uh, thunderstorm activity, just a 2% chance here for some tornado activity across Jacksonville, Florida. Um, not a big deal, but... You know, keep your eye there on the sky with those thunderstorms popping up. Could see uh, some wind gusts and, uh, again, a 2% chance there of some tornado activity. As we shift gears here and watch that storm system head off to the east coast, there's another one behind that. Looks like uh, towards the middle end of the week here, we got uh, another similar event taking place with some snow expected across a good portion of Texas. That includes Dallas, Texas, um, and some ice mixed in there as well. Severe weather south here. Uh, so we got to watch that. Cold air, warm moisture, uh, it tends to create that severe weather potential. And uh, yeah, that cold air isn't really going away anywhere that I can see. Uh, towards the January 20th time period, there's some type of system out here that may hit Southern California. Uh, those guys, I don't think they've seen a drop of rain this winter. And uh, that's not good news for them. There's actually quite a stark difference here between precipitation anomalies from the north, northern California, about Sacramento northward, compared to areas south here where it's super dry. But it does look like uh, some storm system there may be heading in. Hopefully we get rid of this cold air, this type of... This type of setup here normally keeps the West Coast dry in the uh, areas east of the Rockies super cold. Um, and snow and ice and whatnot. So maybe we all can get that pattern to change in favor of removing the cold air and, and returning uh, some wet weather out here to cross the West Coast. I want to show you guys the uh, <clears throat> drought map out here. Uh, there is some type of wind event that's about ready to take place here in Southern California. Um, not for sure when that is. Let me look here and see. Wind gust. I think that's coming up here. Well, there we go. It looks like Tuesday. In the Tuesday night or so, 
big time offshore wind event. These are the Santa Ana winds that blow offshore down from the mountains. That's going to not really heat things up, you know, in the summertime, that can really produce some heat, but that's going to, uh, looks like it's going to be a, a big time fire potential issue out there. And with the already current dry conditions, you know, that's definitely not good. If we look here at the drought intensity, obviously that's increasing there in Southern California due to the lack of moisture. Now, if we look at the moisture anomalies here at the surface levels, this area is super duper dry, even down into the deeper areas. Uh, up here in Northern California, we're still wet. Uh, and in fact, we're, uh, I think we're a little bit above normal right now uh, at the surface and at the uh, deeper level there. Now, that could change here if we don't see any rain for the remainder of the winter. This is our wet season out here. We don't get thunderstorms in April and May like they do out in the southern plains. This is uh, this is when we should be getting our rain. And if we don't continue to get it, we're going to look just like Southern California here in a month. So hopefully we get uh, some further rain out here. But look at that difference here from Sacramento, Stockton area southward. Super dry. The storm systems uh, this winter have been limited uh, to this area northward and of course me i'm living outside here of chico i'm i'm okay with the wet weather but these guys down here they uh they definitely need some rain super duper dry down there wet as far as the current soil moisture in northern california still super wet out here a uh, top layer and way down below so even at night we're getting a lot of dew a lot of moisture out there that re um you, it just adds further moisture there uh, for the um, the greenery and the plants and the trees and whatnot here. So I'll, I'll take it, but hopefully these guys get a little bit of uh, a little bit of rainfall in the future for them. Fire danger, man, very high out there across portions of Southern California here. And uh, the fuel moisture, that's out there as well. Got uh, some big time potential here. We look at Tuesday and Monday when we're expecting those Santa Ana winds. That uh, could be a big deal. We're talking about extreme fire conditions out there across Southern California. Uh, right now, I don't think we have any type of fires. Let me double check here and see. These guys look like they're underneath some type of uh, fire weather watch out there. Red flag warning across the majority of Southern California there fire weather watch all sorts of not good stuff uh there is one fire it looks like in southern california right now <clears throat> i'm sure this thing's going to light up here in the next couple days unfortunately it seems to always happen got the betty fire down there across the uh uh that's yuma arizona so really nothing in california right now but we'll check back on that. I have a feeling things are going to start firing up down there. And that's not good. Not good at all. All right. Uh, I'm out of here, folks. Have yourself a wonderful Monday. Watch Southern California there. Seeing a little bit of some, sp some spiky activity. I like to call this spiky because it's just very small uh, microquake activity there around Southern California. Also some showing up there on Dinsmore Station in Northern California, but nothing big for now. We'll continue to watch it. Obviously somewhat of a, uh, a noticeable increase here across certain regions where the strain is building up from the south and uh, definitely hammering this area up here as well. A lot of small microquakes being uh, reported here across that shear boundary. All right, uh, we'll catch you guys out here a little bit later on unless something major happens. Have a good day.